Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem. And in this video today, we're going to be painting up the Beltan Ranger Amalan Shadow Guide. I believe that's how you say it. Um, and we're going to be painting up using contrast airbrush and various other techniques to make sure that we can paint it real fast, real quick, and get it on the board to play. So if you watched some of the other videos previously, you will know um, that uh, we did a video basically just telling you how to get your Heroes for Adventuring started. With this particular model, I did a Chaos Black undercoat and then used the airbrush to do a Xenophil highlight, mainly of the cloak, because that's the only real thing I'm going to be airbrushing. The rest of it I'm then going to be painting up and mainly using some contrast paints with additions. So far... In your collection you should have painted the um yeah that guy um uh, the got the rogue trader and you should also have the navigator these both guys have been done in the same sort of method a mixture of contrast normal and airbrushing um, with the idea of creating speed right let's get some paint ready so in a twist we have in here we have Contrast paint, we've got the Orc Flesh. No need to thin it out, it will come out quite easily on its own. And we're going to paint, primarily paint, don't I ever forget yet. Yep, primarily paint out the cloak. Now I've got it set to about 25 PSI, just as a bit shy of 30. And let's get it on. So, as a bit of an extra, we're going to put a little tiny bit of a highlight on, still with the airbrush. I best clean that before I uh, put stuff everywhere. There we go. Uh, I've got Warpstone Glow and a little bit of Game Air White from the Leho. We've got a nice bit of highlighting to do. Now I'm just going to try again, just to try and go in, as I did on some previous videos, we're going to try and go in one particular direction. I'm just sort of trying to catch as if we're doing an edge highlight with an airbrush. It's easy to do if you're not quite confident of yourself just do it on a like get a box or something and just try catching the corner it, you'll find it quite easy now the next stage is optional i'm going to be using some uh, Corellia Green Shade mixed in with some Lamy Medium and we are going to just reinforce the shadows. You don't have to, so if you don't want to do this you don't have to do it. I'm just doing it for me because I am a bit finny, uh, finicky and picky, but you don't need to do this section. This is just for perfectionists if you like. Now the next bit is just pure Corellia Green Shade. We are going to cheat by painting this into the inner section of the robe. And I'm not going to drown it, but we are going to put quite a bit in. The reason for this is that we're just trying to create a, a difference between the front bit and the back bit without actually having to do a whole new painting section. Remember, I'm trying to get this painted quick so we can get it played with. I'm saying that, this is probably, I've had this box for like a year. Probably why I'm doing it, because I don't think Bev will let me have any more boxes until I've uh, painted some old ones. So all the inner pieces, just give them a run of pure Corellia green shade. Okay, so, we've got a lovely green on the cloak gun. Now we're going to be putting and sorting out the white on the armour. So I've covered everything, as you can see in grey here, including the face, little bits of the face mask, the body. I've even done the grenades because they're going to be done black, and the cable going up to the actual gun. And now, we're going to coat all the white sections. Don't forget, that that is actually brown, so... But we're basically going to be coating the areas that need to be white with the apothecary white from Sizzle Colour. Now, I'll be honest, this is a good base, so it's a good sort of shade. 
it's more like a shared paint um, right can be a pain in the backside to actually paint up so this is a one of the best ways of getting good results don't forget there's bits on the back that need doing try if you can to avoid the bits that's going to be brown but because we're using a lighter colour first don't worry too much about it So while I'm waiting for the white to dry, I've painted up some wildwood into the, what would normally be the leathery areas. And I have missed a bit because that needs to be wildwood as well. Um, and I'm going to use some dark old flesh. Uh, just do that, don't do any other pieces of gold. This weapon we are going to be doing very different than we're going to be trying to make it look like it's Wraith Bone. Next step. How is the next step? We're going to dry brush some scrag brown into the leather ish legs. And now we're mixing up um, two parts Agrax to one part Lamia Medium. And we're putting that on the brown legs. We're also going to be putting that mix on the gold mix. Now, a lot of people would probably want to put it on pure. These are its elder gold pieces. So I'm wanting a subtle uh, highlight more than I'm wanting um, like a, an Imperium gold. These guys are probably better at forging it than... The Imperium is, so therefore I'm wanting it to be a bit lighter. Now, I've skipped ahead a bit. I've done a couple of layers of your Shabti Bone. I probably need to do another layer of a Shabti Bone on that. Um, I've done that on the uh, little thing dangling off there as well. And I've painted corn red into the little gem areas that I'm wanting to actually be gems. I'm now putting in a little bit of water down Evil Sun's Scarlet, and I'm going to put a couple of layers of this just over the top of the gems. And the reason I'm doing it as a couple of layers is you can kind of use it as a bit like a glaze.
For that to dry, just thin down some Caraberg Crimson. You don't have to do this step, but I'm just gonna thin down just a little bit of Caraberg, and that's gonna go on to the gems. And this, I'm going to put onto the gem on the front. Can you see how that is? Oh, yeah.
два. Hello, creator, lighter. Dry rush. And just repeat that process until you get it as light as you want. And I'm just going to do a little bit more white. And with that still on there, that should come through quite bright. Yes, it does. So, that's pretty much where we've got to. And I've done the purple for the site, same as the purple on there. So if you just follow that tutorial for that one. Uh, I am going to class that as done. I don't want to put any any silver highlights on the uh, gold because I quite like it as it is. I am going to do some little bits though. So you can do it to this point and then call it done. I am going to add some extras. And I've kind of done. I've put a little bit of quick um, veins in there. I've basically done that by using uh, just some black um thing and i've tried to put an eye in the face um but that's it that's a very quick done shadow uh amelia i'm um, amelia yeah that one <laughs> that elder uh and i quite like the bone weapon to be honest because it stands out against the rest of the uh, equipment that uh, i guess the rest of them actual model instead um none of this is varnished yet i'm going to be varnishing and basing all of my blackstone fortress good guys I know, I know we don't do good guys in 40k, but you know what I'm saying. All at the same time. So, that one's done. It's now going to be on to the next figure. So, I wonder what robot I'm going to... Oh, it's not in camera show. I wonder what robot I'm going to be painting next. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.